Now, you'll have been given three different heat temperatures to actually work from. And I'm just going to run through the procedure that you need to adopt to equilibrate your two solutions. So let's imagine that uh, one of the temperatures that you've been given to work with is 80 degrees. We've set up one of the water baths at 80 degrees. It's probably going to be the big one, which is the one on the left-hand side. The other water bath is if you have to do a sample with 70 degrees. Measure out your sodium thiosulfate, 10 cubic centimetres. Measure out your hydrochloric acid. Just write your initials on the top there and pop them into the water bath, just like so. And then what you're going to do is you're going to leave them to equi equilibrate. And you want these, both of these, to get up to 80 degrees. And what you're not doing is measuring the temperature of the water in the water bath, because that is 80 degrees or thereabouts. What you need to do is to have a clean thermometer in each of the test tubes. And just leave the test tube set up for a few minutes just to equilibrate. In the meantime, you can be setting up one of your other temperatures if you wish. If you're doing room temperature, there's no need for any equilibration at all. You can do it exactly as per the original demo. So I've just checked and both of the test tubes contents are now at 80 degrees. Don't worry too much if it's a degree under or a degree over. It's the comparison you're looking at. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pour your sodium thiosulfate sulfate into the beaker over the cross. You're going to pour in the hydrochloric acid, start the timer. And you're going to wait for the sulfur to be precipitated out and for the cross to actually disappear exactly as you did before. If one of your temperatures is 70 degrees, then you'll follow exactly the same procedure as you did for 80 degrees using the thermostatically controlled water bath. Unfortunately, we've only got two water baths, so if one of your temperatures is 60 degrees, you'll have to be a little bit creative. And so what you'll need to do is to put a little bit of hot water from the kettle, make sure it's come up to the boil, And then you're going to just top it up with a little bit of cold water. Take a quick dip to see what the temperature is. My suggestion is that if you want the solutions to get to 60 degrees in the test tubes, you actually make the water in the beaker about 65. And that's about what that is now. So now I'm going to pop the two test tubes into the beaker. I'm going to put thermometers into each of the test tubes. Beware of cross-contamination. Make sure you always clean the thermometers off thoroughly. And we're going to leave that for four or five minutes uh, just to see when they get up to temperature. Finally, you may have to put your setup at 40 degrees. In which case, if you let the hot water run hot, that comes out at a pretty constant 40 degrees. Take a quick dip with a clean thermometer and just see what the temperature is. pretty close to 40 degrees, I'm going to increase the temperature of that water in the beaker to 45 by adding some boiling water from the kettle. And then I'm going to place my two test tubes into the 40 degree beaker. 
two clean thermometers. And I'm just going to let them sit there for five minutes or so just to equilibrate and get up to temperature. Now nicely up to 40 degrees now in the beakers. So I'm now going to put the 10 cubic centimetres of sodium flour sulphate in. I'm going to add the 1 mil of acid and start the timer. A little bit of fumbling there. And then we're just going to wait for the appearance of the precipitate and the disappearance of the cross. As soon as the cross disappears, you'll stop the timer and record the result onto your table. You're going to do two runs of each temperature. You're going to do three temperatures and if you get through the three temperatures quickly enough you'll be able to carry on and do some of the remaining temperatures as well. I can't stress how important it is to avoid cross-contamination. If you do cross-contaminate, you'll find that the precipitate appears before you even mix the two solutions together. Over to you.